Today we're going to focus on stride mechanics. Extension is the first stage of the stride. It is the motion of driving your skate away from your body. Inside your skate, your heel should feel like it's going towards your skate laces and your toes should be pushing against your insoles. The recovery is the second stage of the stride. After you push, you need to bring your foot back under your body so that you can then stride with your other leg. A good recovery brings a skate back as quickly as possible. Some players have developed a habit of lifting their heels and making a circular motion in the recovery. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Keep your skate low to the ice as you return your skate under your body. Even if you get a full extension at the end of your stride and recover low to the ice, you may not have a long stride. If you keep your feet too wide apart when you skate, you will develop a short stride. Compare the length of a stride when your legs are far apart to a stride that begins from a good athletic position. The longer you can keep your skate in contact with the ice, the more power you'll be able to transfer to your stride and the faster you'll be. Now compare the length of these two strides. Both strides begin with the feet under the body, but one is short and one is long. The difference is in the knees. Players who sit low when they skate will not only have a longer stride, but they will also have a more powerful stride. Power is a measure of how strong and explosive you are as an athlete. We can develop strength and explosiveness in our bodies by training. The last thing I want to draw attention to before getting into the drills is the upper body. Players who swing their arms across their body actually slow themselves down. They decrease their forward momentum by generating lateral momentum, which pulls them side to side instead of straight ahead. Players with a good arm swing drive their hands forwards as they stride, but don't swing their arms backwards as that can also pull the skater side to side. Once you put all of these together, you can develop a fast and efficient stride that will not only make you a faster skater, it will allow you to skate at top speed for longer intervals. Now I'll show you five drills you can do to become a better skater. The first drill focuses on extension. Start in an athletic position and using only your right leg push until your leg is fully extended. Return your foot under your body until your skates are parallel and glide. Repeat this motion all the way down the ice using only your right leg. You can do the left leg on the way back up the ice. Remember to fully extend your leg from your hip to your toes, driving your heel towards your laces and pushing down against the insole with your toes. This same drill can be executed on a skating treadmill. In the gym, we can use a slide board. At home, you can do shuffles. The second drill will improve your recovery. In this drill, we will exaggerate keeping the skate low to the ice by dragging the toe of the skate blade along the ice as the skater's leg returns to the athletic position. Watch Vince as he pushes and then drags his toe. He won't skate like this in a game, but this motion will train his muscles to keep his skate low after the push. Don't drag your toes on the treadmill. Instead, use the mirror in front of you to monitor how low or high your skate is during the recovery. For off-ice training, lateral resistors are a great way to train the muscles involved in this movement. At home, you can shuffle through a ladder to develop these movements. If you don't have a ladder, you can draw one on your driveway with chalk. The next drill focuses on the length of your stride. Vince will still fully extend his leg and exaggerate his recovery by dragging his toes, but now we'll add one more piece. To ensure that he is bringing his legs all the way back under his body, he will clip the heels of his skates together after each stride. Again, he won't do this in a game, but we are training the muscles to bring his legs all the way back under his body. To lengthen your stride on the treadmill, first you need to mark a center line. Once you find this mark, you can see how far your leg travels when returning under your body. To develop a long stride, cross the line with each recovery. In the gym, you can do an exercise we call grid skate. Be sure to bring your feet to a parallel position after every extension. You can do this one at home too. When training for power, it is important to perform explosive movements. Strong, slow muscles aren't as valuable to a skater as strong, fast muscles. If you train slow, you will remain slow. If you train to be fast, you will get faster. On the ice, we can do sprints with parachutes or harnesses to train for power. The increased resistance is a key here. If you don't have a harness or a parachute, try pushing a teammate. On the treadmill, we can increase resistance by changing the pitch of the track. 
While you'll never have to do this on real ice, the resistance of skating uphill is great for developing leg strength. In the gym, our athletes work these muscles in many different ways. One of them is split squats. Notice the tempo of this exercise. The downward movement takes two seconds. The upward movement is performed as quickly or as explosively as possible. Younger players or players who don't have access to a gym can do a variation on this drill with no weight. This is called a pitcher squat. Elevate one leg behind you and using your body weight as resistance, perform a squat. Your weight should be on the front leg. As with all squatting and lunging motions, make sure your body travels downwards and not forwards. If your knee is moving out over your foot as you perform this motion, you'll need to modify your stance. When performed properly, the knee stays in line vertically with the ankle. The final drill on our circuit will incorporate acceleration. Long strides are not ideal when starting from a full stop and trying to get to top speed as quickly as possible. In this case, a skater needs to make a few short, choppy pushes to quickly gain momentum. When accelerating straight ahead, use the V-start. This start gets its name from the positioning of the skates. The ankles start close together and the knees and toes are turned out. After three or four short accelerating strides, execute your forward skating mechanics and bring yourself to full speed. You can add a variation to this drill to develop speed from a crossover start. This is important when changing directions with stops and starts. After completing one crossover step, open your hip and accelerate forwards. Just as before, after three or four quick pushes, lengthen your stride and get up to top speed. Keep the treadmill at an incline to work on acceleration. Start at the front of the track and glide backwards. When you near the end of the track, accelerate until you reach your initial position. In the gym, we do a drill called ball drops to train for acceleration. Once you see the ball, try to catch it before the second bounce. At home, you can do chase sprints with your friends or teammates. The goal here is to have the player starting at the rear react to the leader. The sprint starts when the leader decides to get up and run. It is the job of the player at the rear to react. Chase the leader and try to apply a tag before the sprint is over. Try to do this in an area where you can run at least 15 meters. When it comes to training, you get out of it what you put into it. Doing each of these drills once won't necessarily make you better, but if you do each of these five drills for two minutes, a total of 10 minutes of skating each day, you'll be as fast as the flash in no time.